We're visiting one of the most scenic parts of Italy, Cinque Terre, the five villages that run along the coastline of the Italian Riviera. You'll see them all in this spectacular visual journey, starting with Monte Rosso down to Vernazza, Cornelia, Monarola, and Rio Maggiore. We'll get around by train, boat, and walking. We'll show you the shops, the restaurants, the little lanes, some amazing scenic lookout points, and those endless green hills along the shore. Here's a quick preview of the villages that we'll be taking a walk in. Monte Rosso, Vernazza, Manarola, and at the southern end, Real Maggiore. Places you can visit by boat, train, or walking, but not by driving. There's no direct roads that connect these isolated little villages. And if you come here in October, as we are, it's not that crowded, and you'll enjoy perfect weather with ideal conditions. Tucked away on the northwest coast of Italy, you'll find some of the most attractive and magical little villages in Europe, known worldwide as the Cinque Terre. We'll begin our in-depth exploration at the largest and northernmost village, Monte Rosso. We'll take a walk in the little back lanes, see the locals out parading with their dogs and shopping. We'll take you to some of the out-of-the-way small lanes for a walk in the back streets of town and provide tips on how you can get around. We'll get there by train from a neighboring city of Santa Margarita Ligure, where we've been staying as our home base for visiting the region. The train service is quite good, only takes one hour to get from Santa Margarita down to Cinque Terre on a scenic ride along the coast. Upon arrival at the Monte Rosso train station, it's a short walk. You go through the underground tunnel of the station and out onto a beautiful promenade along the water's edge, and that will lead you right to the old part of Monte Rosso. On the left side, the newer part of town with some hotels and a beach, but the more interesting place is the old town over on the right side. Along the way, You'll get lovely scenic vistas of the beach and the blue Mediterranean and the green hills behind. So pretty, you have to photograph it. It's a few hundred meters, just takes you about five minutes and you'll be walking through a tunnel so that you don't have to climb up and over a ridge. And while this is largely a pedestrian town, there are some little service vehicles buzzing around and that brings you into the old section with its splendid beach. Monte Rosso is the only one of the five towns that has a sandy beach. One of many good reasons to be sure that you stop here also and have a good look around. We will show you that Monte Rosso itself is a beautiful village and yet somehow it sometimes gets overlooked by people who are coming to Cinque Terre to see the other villages. Just because it has a new town don't be thrown off, it's also got an old town, which is where we are in the current program, walking through the lanes of the old town, to show you that Monte Rosso really has more lanes, more restaurants, and more shops than any of the other villages of the Cinque Terre. So it really is an important place and a wonderful place for you to visit when you go to explore Cinque Terre. Monte Rosso on the north end of the chain is the largest of the five hamlets and makes a good home base because it has 20 hotels, the only broad sandy beach, excellent restaurants, and the start of the hiking trail. Hiking through the hills past vineyards with enchanting views all around is one of the great attractions, but even more enjoyable for most visitors is simply strolling and relaxing in each village, soaking up the peaceful old world ambiance where cars and trucks are not allowed, except a few of those small service vehicles. You really don't have to do any hiking at all to enjoy the town since frequent train and boat services are available, but walking is such a part of the complete experience that you should try at least a couple of the connecting routes some of which are very easy. Of course, the best way to see any place worth visiting is walking, just using your own two feet, 
and meandering around. And here it's very easy because the old town is so small, you don't need a map. Just take a left, take a right, go straight, see what looks good. You're gonna wind up going around in circles. That's perfectly okay. You might walk back along the same route you started with and you'll see it in a different way. There is one main pedestrian lane in the town that we have been showing you, but these little side lanes are just as interesting. You get a chance to kind of mingle with some of the locals back here. As you walk through Monte Rosso, you're going to realize that a great many of the people are residents of the town rather than tourists. And it's a lovely mix of older folks and working people, fishermen, and the kids. It's a place of great interest for the visitor, but it's also a place where many people live. By now you can see the little lanes of Monte Rosso are endlessly fascinating. It's the people, the buildings, the food, the restaurants. One of the most enjoyable Cinque Terre activities is taking a boat ride, and that's where we're going now. You can purchase your tickets right at the dock. You don't have to make any reservations ahead of time. Just get there maybe 20 minutes before departure and you will get right on. There's a regular ferry service that connects each of the villages during the season, which runs from April through October. From the water, you will have the most spectacular views of the villages and the green hillsides up above. Enjoying our final views of Monte Rosso. It takes anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to actually travel from one village to the next once you are underway. So they really are quite close to each other. The next village south is Vernazza, just over three kilometers away. And you could actually hike there. There's a nice trail that goes up along the hills, the famous hiking trail. And that'll take you about two hours if you're taking it easy. We made an old movie about that hike that you can find in our collection but they say it's the most difficult section of the trails because it has some steep ups and downs. Or you could ride the train, which only takes three minutes. A good way to get around the area is with a mix of all three, walking, the train, and this beautiful boat ride. As the boat comes into the little port of Vernazza, you're going to get some wonderful views. Be sure to get on deck or up on top looking instead of sitting indoors and missing it. You want to get some pictures and enjoy the experience. A jetty with massive rocks does form a small harbor. There were no natural ports in the area, so the residents had to make do and build their own with the resulting shelters very small. You can gain a fabulous view looking down at that little harbor and the picturesque village beyond. And coming up in a few minutes, we'll show you how to get up there. It's quite easy. Vernazza may be the most beautiful of all, set perfectly in a tiny valley on the edge of the sea with colorful homes built one on top of the next and framed by a couple of churches and towers. You are within a stone's throw of the water no matter where you stand. Vernazza is a nautical place, as are all of these villages. The food is wonderful. The fish, their famous local pesto, the white wines, and the setting outdoors on the terrace with a beautiful view. If your main activity is just sitting and eating and drinking, that's okay. There is so little level land that the kids use the beach as their soccer field and sometimes they use the main pedestrian lane for an extension of the game, so watch out for flying soccer balls as you walk through the streets. There are quite a few local residents who like to hang out, sit on a bench, chat with their friends, and do some people watching. Of course, you have to walk along the main street, do some shopping or window shopping, get some gelato, a little more people watching. The buildings are beautiful. During the busy season, it can get quite crowded. But you can't really complain because you are here, so you're part of the problem too. You could come in the off season, but then it can be a little cold and gray, cloudy, rainy perhaps, and the boats don't run. So you just gotta go with the flow. It's perfectly okay. Other people are just part of the scenery. 
Just meandering along on this busy lane is a lot of fun. You're going a little bit uphill, lots of shops to have a look at, maybe get a bite, have a drink. It's a good place to just hang out and spend some time. But there's something special you really want to do, and that's walk up the hill for the view. Get into the main plaza again and go up the little staircase on the side of the plaza and then just start walking. It's very well organized. You just follow the path. There'll be people in front, people behind. Just keep going on up. Sometimes it gets level. Sometimes there's another staircase and it keeps going higher. You're walking along a beautiful paving. So just enjoy the stroll and keep on going. You might even see the train passing by down below. It's going to take you another 10 or 15 minutes depending on how you walk, but you will be getting up there and the view is going to be worth it, guaranteed. Then you get to the first viewpoint and it is spectacular. Beautiful view looking down at the village of Vernazza. There are some decent views down below as you walk along. You might stop and have a look, but keep on going because the main views are still up ahead. Many people stop at that first viewpoint because it is so beautiful. They take their pictures, they do their selfies, and they're done. They go back down again. But a better view lies just ahead. It's only another 5 to 10 minutes walk, so keep on going. It's really quite easy, and it's going to be worth it. Even though you're going up and then you have to go down again sometimes and then up again on these steps, it's very safe, very easy to do. And remember, you're doing it the simple way. Instead of walking all the way from the next village a couple of miles away, you're just walking up from Vernazza to get this viewpoint. Some people have been struggling for hours to get here. It's only 15 minutes from sea level up to the classic perspective where you will get that postcard view. Along the way, you're going to run into fellow travelers who are also enjoying the experience. So say hello and give them a smile. And then you have arrived at the view. One of the best views you will ever enjoy in your life. Vernazza spread out back, below in back. all its glory. Oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> it is just so scenic and perfect and picturesque. You're going to be shooting the same picture over and over again. Maybe zoom in, get a close-up, get a wide angle. Here's the comparison with that first view, just a little bit lower. You can see the higher view is better. Rest your camera on the railing to get a good steady shot. No matter what kind of camera you're using, and no matter what the weather conditions, it's going to be beautiful. It would really be a shame to come all the way over here to Vernazza and not walk up this trail, and yet that's what most people fail to do. They just come into the town, which is beautiful. Of course, the village is very scenic, and you're surrounded by those lovely buildings when you're down in the middle of the village. That's all well and good. But it's too bad that most people don't get up this very simple little path. So when you go, be sure to take this little hike. You'll find it's definitely worthwhile. This walk up the hillside is really quite easy. Don't be alarmed by the stairs and the elevation. You can see a lot of it is quite level. It's all very safe and quite easy. And here's what you get. There is the reward, a beautiful view. Down below, you can see the railroad tracks. That's one way to get out of here. And on the other side, the boat pulling into its dock. And that's how we'll be soon leaving on our way to Manarola. And then, of course, going down is even easier. And you've got that rosy glow, that feeling of satisfaction of having a little bit of a challenge behind you. And you've got the nice view and you've got some nice pictures out of it. And then you know that when you get down to the bottom of the hill, you're going to have a reward waiting for you, perhaps a meal or at least a drink. Just scamper along and only takes maybe five minutes to get back down the hill. It's certainly easier walking down than walking up. Put that argument to rest. Part of the fun of walking up the hillside is not just getting to the destination for the beautiful view, but enjoying the buildings and steps and alleyways and other beautiful little details of this old town. 
a peculiar aspect of this path up to the spectacular viewpoint is the entrances are slightly hidden. There is not much in the way of signage to let you know the way. These people have just come down the same path emerging from the side alley and look at the little tiny signs that mark the way. Somebody hand painted Monte Rosso on the wall, the trail goes to Monte Rosso, and the green sign is just for an emergency exit. The steps where we began the hike up came off of the main piazza, but here too there's no sign. The route up that we took coming off of the piazza and then coming back down again onto the main lane, but you have to look for those entrances. It is strange that there's no signage to point you towards one of the great little hikes in all of Italy. But now you know how to find it, so next time you're in Vernazza, be sure to take that hike. Most visitors do not stray very far from the main pedestrian lane, which is also a lot of fun to experience, with its restaurants and little shops, some of which are really ancient. Look at this ceiling, hundreds of years old. And there are some fishermen. Uh, there's still a fishing economy here. In the old days, fishing had been very important to the people, but now, of course, the economy is mostly based on tourism. And watch out for traffic. No, not from automobiles, but from the small kids on their bicycles. As you keep walking up the slope of the main pedestrian lane, you will reach the railroad track with a view looking back at the town. But instead of taking the train, we're going back down to the shore and we're going to be looking for our boat ride to continue to our next destination, the village of Manarola. The train would only take five minutes to get you there and to walk all the way down to the shore and wait for the boat, get on the boat and so on is going to take most of 45 minutes. But you will see the boat ride is so beautiful, it's well worth it. Right away upon leaving the boat dock, you'll have lovely views looking back into the village. At Vernazza, there is one very distinctive landmark, a stone tower that was part of the medieval wall that went around the village to protect it from invaders. The boat stops at four of the five villages, but not at Cornelia. You'll see it as you pass by. Cornelia is unique among the five villages because it's perched up on the hill. So you've got to climb some steps to get up there. Many years ago, we did visit Cornelia, and I have some old video footage to show you, give you an idea of what it's like up there. About every 30 minutes, another local train comes rolling through, and in this case, we're going to travel from Vernazza to the next town south, Cornelia. Cornelia is unique among these five villages because it's up on the hill. It has no direct access to the water. So this is a hilltop village, one of the oldest, perhaps the oldest of all of them. And yes, there are going to be more stairs. It's a hilltop, so what do you expect? A little bit of climbing. Here you see it from the water's edge. Cornelia up on its cliff. Earlier in their history, all of the villages were up on the hillside and not directly connected to the water for defensive reasons. That way they were better protected from the seafaring pirate raids. Well, Cornelia, being so old, is just oozing with more of its historic charm. This is the main street. You see how narrow it is. And it seems like there are more locals than tourists out about today. Not very crowded. And then we come to the little tiny main square of Cornelia. It's about 10 yards across in one direction, 20 yards across in the other, but big enough to hold some tables and host some picnic lunches for the intrepid hikers. Cornelia, like the other villages, is surrounded by the vineyards where they grow the grapes for the local wine. It's a white wine. From here we can see down the coast to the next destination we're heading for is Manarola. UNESCO has designated this entire coastline as a World Heritage Area. They say the Ligurian coast between Cinque Terre and Porto Venere is a cultural landscape of great scenic and cultural value. The little village of Manarola is next up. Manarola spills down the hill to the waterfront. Its houses pack solidly together in the typical pattern of the region 
with terraced hillsides for the grapes up above. They don't have a beach, but there is a boat ramp carved into the stone. The ramp leads to a cove with good swimming, further protected by a stone jetty. The boat dock is outside of that protected jetty area, so it can be a little bouncy, especially if the seas are not calm. Fortunately, today was a very mild day. To get this excellent view of the colorful houses up on the hill, you want to walk along a pathway by the shore. Monarola is another one of the beautiful towns of Cinque Terre. And when you get to Monarola, you want to walk through the village and walk to the boat ramp and be sure to walk out to the point where we're standing now to get this vista. Looking back, you see the pastel-colored cubic buildings just spilling down the hillside. It's really quite a wonderful sight. We're just taking a quick look at Monarola to give you a little feeling for this beautiful place. When you're in the middle of Monarola Village, you have this nice view looking up the main street. Of course, there's restaurants and cafes along there, so gift shops and souvenir shops, and a lot of residences up on the hillside. There's about a thousand people living here. And you can stay in Monarola. There's some bed and breakfasts here. There's some little hotels. UNESCO continues in summarizing the history, telling us that the five villages of Cinque Terre date back to the later Middle Ages. The layout and disposition of the small towns and the shaping of the surrounding landscape encapsulate the continuous history of human settlement in this region over the past millennium. They don't have a beach, but there is a boat ramp carved into the stone. The ramp leads to a cove with good swimming, further protected by a stone jetty and ladders to help people get in and out of the water. As you can see in this old video that I shot in the summertime years ago, on a warm day, the boat ramp is the most popular spot around for it functions like a beach, packed with sunbathers in the summer. There's real good swimming here. It's not an Olympic-sized swimming pool, but it's nice sheltered waters. This little boat ramp was the most popular spot in town. Our ferry ride continues along the coast, offering the splendid views of the green hills above. And then arriving at the last of the five villages, Rio Maggiore. Approaching this little village by boat is one of the most scenic arrivals you'll ever have. Ferry service connects each one of these villages, and from Monarola, it is only a 10-minute cruise to Rio Maggiore. It's a nice ride with splendid views of the coastal cliffs and hills above, and the blue sea all around. Enchanting, charming Rio Maggiore is the grand climax to our survey of Cinque Terre. Here too you see that familiar pattern, the houses tumbling down the cliffs to the water's edge and a main pedestrian street rising up from the tiny cove, surrounded by terraced homes covering the hillside, rising high. It's a surprising mix of urban high density in the midst of a tranquil rural setting. Today we've been quite lucky with the weather, with the bright sunshine illuminating the colorful pastel buildings. We're traveling in early October and found the temperatures were very mild and comfortable. If you come much later than this, say late October, it could be a lot colder and you might find the boats are no longer running. They shut down for the winter. This boat dock, just like the others, is not in a sheltered cove. It's in the open Mediterranean the Ligurian Sea, which is generally calm, especially on a day like this with very little wind. And yet the boat is bobbing up and down a bit, so we're assisted onto the gangway. And then we have a little bit of a challenge ahead of us. It's a big stone staircase. There must be a hundred steps there. Rio Maggiore. We gotta go up, and it's a little crowded because people are also queued up on the staircase coming down to get on the boat. But it's just wide enough, room for everybody. We had been planning on taking the boat ride back to Monte Rosa where we began the day, but after seeing this long lineup and crowd, we figured, oh, no sense waiting, we can just take the train back, which worked out quite nicely, as you'll see later. Climbing up this big staircase is worthwhile because it gives you the perfect view looking up into the village of Rio Maggiore, and then you'll be walking right back down to sea level. 
but this climb up and down is certainly worth it. Look at that view. In the summertime, people are swimming in the little cove and that boat ramp is kind of like a beach for sunbathing, but for locals as well as for visitors. What a vista. You have to walk out to that little point to get the view and it's certainly worthwhile. <laughs> You notice this terrace gets a little crowded because it's such a popular spot. People getting off the boat, getting on the boat, or just wanting to enjoy the view. And steps that lead us right down to the little tiny boat harbor. It's really so small they keep the boats up on dry land rather than leaving them out in the water bobbing around. So you can see all the boats are stacked up. It's not really the boating season, so there's not a lot of fishing activity going on right now, but there's plenty for us to look at, that's for sure. It's really a colorful little cove down here. And the buildings are kind of beat up and old. They're about 400 years old, but people do take good care of them. And there's residences that are right here in the little harbor front. And of course, you're gonna see cats anytime you've got a marine village, a nautical environment. They like to hang out down here among the boats and nets in hopes of catching some fish scraps. In the summertime, people are swimming in the little cove and that boat ramp is kind of like a beach for sunbathing, but for locals as well as for visitors. It's a spectacular little village with several lanes that we'll be exploring in the program. Walking from the shore into the village is a little bit unusual. You don't just go straight in, you walk up the staircase and then you find yourself in a tunnel walking underneath the train tracks. And later you'll come back to this same tunnel if you're going to be catching the train, as we'll show you later when we depart by train. But first we're going to have a look around the village. After climbing the steps and walking through that corridor, you will emerge into the magical small world of Rio Maggiore. Once you're walking along on that main pedestrian street, it does look very similar to the last couple of places you visited, to Monarola and Rio Maggiore. But of course, each place has its own special character. One difference here is that you do not reach the train station by walking up the hill as you do in the other towns. It's back there at the waterfront as we showed you. Nevertheless, you do want to walk up, explore. There's some shops up there. There's a place to have a drink, have a bite, and admire the colorful buildings with laundry hanging out of some windows reminding you that this town is fully occupied. You're going to find enough shops to keep you busy. A t-shirt would be an ideal present to take home. And sometimes you might have to pay for the toilet, which is worth it when you've got to go to a clean place. Of course, the alternate strategy is to stop in at a restaurant or a cafe, maybe have a drink or a small bite to eat and use their facilities. There's a sign that says, don't sit, but the little local girl can certainly sit as she pleases. It's really a flower stand. And there's little shops, there's folks living here you see the laundry hanging out the windows and beautiful pastel colored buildings one of the main activities anywhere you go is people watching and here it's the locals watching the tourists and the tourists watching the locals as we walk on by it's really got an authentic character here nice fresh fruits and vegetables at the farmers market Further up slope, you'll notice there are no more shops or restaurants or really anything much to see. So you don't really need to keep climbing up this high. I checked it out for you and can report there's really nothing much up here. Walking down is easier and this is a bittersweet moment because it's the final leg of this wonderful long day of visiting Cinque Terre. To find the train station, you walk back down that same staircase you walked up earlier to get into the village. So we're heading for that train tunnel that will lead us over to the station and the tracks. We have now seen all the highlights and it's time to go. You can buy your train tickets right on the spot, either from the window counter or from the machines. We had been planning on taking the boat ride back because we had that all-day boat pass, but now we gotta buy a train ticket. We've just been visiting Cinque Terre for the day, 
It's been a lovely excursion out from our home base in Santa Margarita Ligure, which is just about one hour away by train. We don't have a direct train, so we're going to ride from Rio Maggiore to Monte Rosso, where we change trains. Along the way, we'll get quick glimpses of scenery like this view of Vernazza, then through more tunnels and emerging for a look at the beach at Monte Rosso. We help each other off the train down onto the platform here at Monte Rosso and waiting for our connection. It comes by pretty quickly. Hop on and off we go on our way back to Santa Margarita Ligure. We have many more movies about this area that you can find in our collection, including a detailed visit at Santa Margarita Ligure and a trip over to world famous Porto Fino. Thanks for watching. We upload a new movie every week, so please subscribe to our channel and be sure to click that little alarm bell. Then you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up? And we always welcome comments down below. It really helps us spread the word. Thank you.